Welcome everybody back to the channel. I'm Captain Impatient here at Just Plain Crazy. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're getting into the elevator servo replacement on the Motion RC uh, Freewing MiG-29. So to every MiG owner's dismay, we wanted to get out and get our MiGs flying in the process of building them just like all of you were. Motion RC released a bulletin that said, hey, We've had some issues. People are moving the linkages to places they shouldn't, away from the recommendation. Apparently, the servos aren't holding up. Whatever the engineering is behind it, there's a bunch of crashes. They recommend you not fly it till they send you replacement servos, which is really cool. I'm impatient. Didn't want to wait that long, so I got myself a set of um, D85MG high-tech digital servos, which replace the high-tech 5085 servos. They're an upgrade, so the D is a slow start feature, which I'll show you here towards the end. It's pretty cool. I use these servos as an upgrade of my F-14 and I've had great success with it. So why not throw them in here? Specs on these servos, they are complete drop-in, even replacements. They're the same size. We'll do some measurements on the linkage here to make sure that we're out at the right spacing from the servo. Also, uh, as far as specs, these put out at 4.8 volts, 3.6 kilograms of torque, or roughly 50 inch-pounds, um, and a transit time speed-wise of 0.17 seconds. In the 6 volt, it's a 0.13 transit time, and they have the ability to go up to 4.2 kilograms, I believe, and it was like 90 inch-pounds. Um, we'll actually check the voltage running to these out of the BEC because there's been some conversation around that. Um, but these new servos I literally just got now. Um, as soon as Motion sent out the email, I decided to hop right on Tower Hobbies. Link down below for Horizon and Tower. Pick yours up for 30 some bucks. You can't go wrong and get a couple to keep around because they work great in these planes. But anyway, the nice part about these servos is that they're digital, so I can go ahead and reprogram them. So with the high techs, they're going to be drop in replacements. All right. I do servo test everything. As I said, I don't care if they're new, they're high techs, they're free wings. I don't care what they are. I use my servo cycler and I get those things rotating. Now, if you can notice, one thing about those is they rotate in the same direction. If you put them here and there, that becomes a problem. So with the D series, you need high techs new programmer. You can also pick these up through Horizon or Tower. They're not that expensive and I use them on a lot of things and I am going to go through the process of reversing one of those. So why don't we go ahead and um, let those cycle for a little bit and we're gonna get this thing taken apart and we'll check it out. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove out the battery tray to access the elevator split. And we are going to find our two elevator wires. Remove those. Take them out of the holders here that I have. Now you'll notice maybe I have an extra Y harness put in here. That's for the sequence doors. And I have the elevator for the left. Now we can um, go ahead and remove the servos and then we're gonna pull that whole wire through and we can either wrap string on this and we can string it, make a nice clean cut on there. I actually fish this between the wires. Like that, wrap it around. Tie a knot. Make sure we have plenty of length. Careful we don't pull that through. Let's get this bird flipped over. Next step is we are going to go ahead and remove the servo and the linkage. Pull the whole thing off of there.
And we'll see if we can fish. Fish them wires out. Man, that's a long run up through there. All right, guys, this thing must have just had some glue or paint on it or something. It was just sticky on the inside. So I don't like the fact that these aren't covered. So we'll seal those like so they don't come apart, right? We're just going to fish this stuff out. Turn there so you can see a little better. There's our string. All right, so now it's time to program the servos. We are going to program one of them to go opposite direction of the other one. So whatever one of them is set to, doesn't matter which one you pick, we're just going to simply reverse its rotation. I don't like servo reversers, period, um, in wiring. You can do it with programming. These aren't really that expensive. You paid that much for a plane. Um, it's okay to put good servos in it. So the leads go forward, the wide part of the servo towards the back. Doesn't matter which one you pick and throw it in one of the sides or the other. And then if you have to, you can reverse the control with your radio. So with the programmer, we're gonna go ahead and plug this in to that port there. We're gonna pick a servo, again, doesn't matter. We're gonna plug the servo into the port there. We are on the D series servos. We are going to hit the button to enter. It's going to load it up. This one you'll see as I scroll down. You can adjust all kinds of things. You can speed them up, slow them down, set neutrals, um, whatever. So this is going clockwise, as you can see right there. We're gonna click that. We're gonna simply rotate the wheel to counterclockwise. And then we are gonna push the wheel down again to enter it. And then we hit back and it is that simple. All right, we're gonna then go ahead and unplug the servo. Gonna unplug the power. And if you want to check it, this thing, you can use it on there too, but this thing is so simple, um, it's not even funny. So we can just plug that servo tester into there. And again, signal. And you could plug in three servos at one time here if you really wanted to. Make sure that those are all polarity correct. And now as we start to cycle, you can see they go opposite directions. So that's how simple it is. Let's get these things installed. So it is time to get the servos installed. I'm going to take a piece of tape. I'm gonna rip that off. We are going to connect in to the proper end. So here, make sure our signal wires are all matched up there and there. I always start on the pigtail end and sometimes I like tape better than those little clip-on things when it comes down to space. So I usually support the wires and the connector, and then I start to peel it up tight going over the other spot. So it almost gives like a little tension going the opposite direction so it doesn't want to pull out. So here, all right, now on this end, we can go ahead and take this here. Again, I go through the wires to hold it. There. And then I go around the wires for support. And then one of the things here that you can do, one of the other tricks, since you're going to pull it through, you want the plug to follow the wire. So as we wrap this around here, can go up around that lead and then just simply put a piece of tape on there as well. Like that, just so it kind of guides itself through. Now we'll find our wire on the other end and simply start, start snaking that wire through. Don't pull it too tight, just enough to get that servo to fall into place right there. And again, guys, direct fit. I'll go ahead and check out these servo screws and see if they're gonna be long enough or if I need to use something else. And I did put in the grommets, which 
it looks like we're not going to use because these were um, flush mount. So just for the sake of keeping engineered angles and linear motion all the same, we will make sure that we take those back out. So let's go ahead and check. I'm interested in the servo arm length from that one to this one. So we will take that off. So they're on the factory arm, the ones that come here. Man, it really looks to be if we look at those, the factory ones aren't going to be um, the factory ones are longer in throw than this arm is. So let's look to see what else come in the kit. One of the things I do want to tell you guys about, watch this area on your plane when you put it on a support or you go to lift it. I really think this is a weak spot in the model. There's no support underneath here. And I understand they needed those bays, but just be careful when you support it. You don't want to break these areas right there. Just in case you guys want to know what voltage comes out of the blue box for the servos, just check it and be sure. So we're set on volts DC. And we are actually at 5 volts. So slightly over the 4.8. So do I believe that we're going to have a little bit more than 3.6? Yes. So these servos are going to be more than strong and actually a little bit stronger than the replacements that Freewing is sending out. And we'll try and keep them on the closest holes to the um, center uh, of, of the servo. So the furthest ones in, not the furthest ones out. Now it's time to refish my elevator wiring back in the holders where I had it. And because the high techs offer a little longer servo leads, um, I may actually cut these and shorten them up so they're not, not as long. Now we're going to go ahead. I opted not to cut those for now and shorten them. And we're just going to make sure that stuff gets plugged in. And everything looks kind of neat and tidy in there. And get that extra laying towards the back. Make sure ribbon cables, make sure we didn't pull anything loose while we were in here working. And again, I'll use hot glue and just tack those connectors, my preference. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the battery plate reinstalled. All right, now that we have the plane flipped over, it's time to install your linkages. And now when you set your elevator on this thing, you want to set your elevator right there for flight. So they tell you in the book, plus or minus one millimeter from that edge. So that's what we want to do. We want to set that thing right there. And right now it's set it in a, in a neutral position, if you will. Now everybody has a preference whether you choose to go for the top or the bottom. Um, but I do have to open those holes back up. I have to open up the holes in the horns to accept this. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. One of the easiest ways, guys, to do this, to find the right fit, is to take that horn. And we are going to take our drill bit assortment here. And we will find which one of those drill bits fits perfectly. And you want to drill those horn holes out. So that one looks to be a little bit too big. We'll keep working our size. So let's get that drilled to this size. We'll be right back. All right, so our holes are pre-drilled now. We're gonna go ahead and get this linkage, I hope, in there. That fits perfectly. And it looks like we're going to have to tighten that up. So now we're gonna go ahead and install our screw. Into the servo. Alright, so where are those servo arms right now? We're going to check the throw. 
and I'm right at about 35, which is 34 is the low rate recommendation, 39 is the high rate. So I can actually, I'm just going to dial up just a little bit more travel. I only need a couple, couple millimeters, so that's good there. And then going down, we're going to max out right about 38, 39 as well. So that, that is a good hold choice with very little adjustment um, for resolution. So I like that. Let's um, hook up the linkage for the other side and check it and make sure everything looks good. Now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to repeat the install on the other side. I don't know if I'm feeling these linkage rods. I like that they're beefier with the carbon support to prevent flexing, which makes me wonder. But I think they're kind of aggravating a little bit to get in as compared to other, other linkages. And I just push on the side of that carbon rod. I think we're going to put a little hot glue or something in there just to keep that thing nice and stiff. So anyway, there's our elevators. So there is our up elevator and our down elevator. Go to low rates. Low rates. High rates. Low rates. High rates. Low rates. High rates. All right, guys, I promised I'd show you what soft start is here. If you don't know before we're done, we're just going to simply power on our radio. We already have our model selected, so we're going to let this thing power up. We are going to just say we're in the process of moving our model around. And those flaps are like that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put power to my model. And you'll see what happens with those. So did you see how nice and slow those moved? They move that way so it doesn't jerk the control surface or hurt the servo, or hurt the control surface or the linkage. They're soft start when we boot up. One of the other questions you guys are going to ask about is UBEC. Is the UBEC going to hold up to those high techs? Those high techs full stalled, it's listed through high techs website, 2.1 amps per side. So the total of four amp draw if fully stalled. Most likely they don't come out and say it, but that's actually at their um, peak voltage at six volts. We know we're only running five in this. So the lower the voltage, ultimately lower the amps. So we're not even really going to pull that. And then again, it has to be at a full stall. Um, so if you add it up to four, you still got four amps between the rest of the servos. You're not going to pull that. I run it all the time in my F14 with the same size UBEC. And again, if you want to stress things out, feel free, go ahead and load that stuff. You know, you can put a little pressure on the control surfaces to check it out, but we should definitely be good. And one of the last things, like I said, is run a couple little tacks of, um, hot glue right down the sides of my connectors to the housing right in the inside down in there so that way nothing comes loose so the only thing we have left to do on this is we got to figure out where we're going to do it what we're going to where we're going to mount our receiver uh to pretty this thing up but this is where my batteries sit for balancing i'm running 5200 i'm going to run z packs in this and we're going to get this thing out and get it to the field so i hope this helps you guys if you're impatient like me um, I want to get this thing up in the air. We, we pay a lot of money for our models. I don't mind putting in a little bit more. I'm glad they addressed it now before we had an incident. So props to Motion RC and Freewing for, you know, a fantastic looking model, number one, two, that, you know, they actually went ahead and, and took care of a situation. I don't need my servos from them yet. We can use those for something else. So anyway, it's Brendan again here from Just Playing Crazy. If you like it, like it. If you don't like it, remember, hit the unlike button twice. Um, like, subscribe, share. I appreciate you guys spending time with me. We're going to catch you for the maiden. Peace.